Income Tax 2020 Practice Problem 1 Presentation 43. Child and Dependent Care Credit. We're going to look at it with regards to a income tax formula with the help of an Excel worksheet. Come in, relax with Income Tax 2020. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need the Lacert Tax software to follow along. However, I do think they have a 30-day free trial. So if you can get access to a promo or demo version of it or any other tax software, it could be a good tool to practice with. We're going to be continuing on with our comprehensive practice problem number one. In the first section, we focused in on the income components mainly. Second section, we focused in on the adjustments to income. And then we looked at the itemized deductions. Then we went and added a Schedule C, sole proprietor business. Now we're focused in on the credits, which in essence are going to be on page two. So now we're on page two, looking at page two. In the prior presentation, we entered a credit for uh, the dependent care credit, keeping that separate from just simply the child tax credit, which you get just from having a dependent uh, child or a qualifying child and then a dependent credit. And then we had the credit down here related to the dependent care, which is on page or schedule three. So if I go back to schedule three, we had our calculation up top of the 480. And then that calculation is coming then from the form uh, 2441 2441 and there we have our calculation so we're going to enter this into our excel worksheet now to consider it on the excel worksheet now once again if you're working on the excel worksheet there's a couple things we want to do one we want to be able to kind of visualize this with regards to the income tax formula because that's the easiest thing to visualize to see the impact of different line items we're going to be on the line item down here for the credits that we're going to be considering and we also just want to be able to have a double check for the data input into both the Excel from the source document and into the tax software to double check basically any problems that might be in place. Now, the information for the credit related to the dependent care would mean that they paid some, some organization for a qualifying child that would then uh, be qualified for the dependent care credit. It's a little bit more complicated to calculate because there's going to be phase outs, as we can see, based on this table. So it's going to be based on this table and our and our basically our income levels. So it's a little bit more difficult for us to kind of assume what the credit will be because it'll be dependent there. But we can at least determine the fact that uh, we should we should have the credit or be entering the credit based on the information provided by the client. It is not something that the client is going to have like a like a formal form for like a W-2 or 1099 or something like that. Uh, but we will know about it possibly from the questionnaire or organizer that we sent out in the prior year. Obviously, if they had the expense in the prior year, we're going to ask about it in the current year. And anytime we have a child that's going to be below you know, a certain age, we probably want to basically ask about that, especially if both parents that are involved are working, because then they could be eligible for that, for that credit. So we, it would be something, in other words, that they would have to tell us about in you know writing or in our questionnaire or organizer or on the prior year tax return give us an idea of it so we're going to go on to our credit so we're looking on this line item which is supported by this page and now we've got the child dependent care now the calculation if they told us what the amount was it was the uh twelve thousand i think or twelve hundred and then i'm just going to multiply that times point two now you you oh, hold on a second that didn't that doesn't seem right this is 1200 times 0.2 now you could kind of put this table in place that doesn't look right either how much was it it was 2400 times 0.2 so the amount was let's do it one more time 2400 times 0.2 now you could kind of copy this table if you so choose and and put this in place so or you can have some complex formula once again in your excel worksheet to pick that up so I'm going to rely to some degree on uh, the tax software to have this table for me. But it just depends on how much detail you want to put for that double check in your Excel worksheet. For me, it, um, it's enough for me to say, hey, this is the amount, the 2400 I see where the 0.2 is being picked up. I'm basically picking that up from, in essence, the tax return. Or you can get it from the instructions and whatnot, which would have this table for this form. This form being the form 2441. So that's going to then be included here. So now we've got that 480, which is added to the, you know, the non-refundable kind of portions or line items of the credits, which included the 2000 for the child, child tax credit, the other dependent credit, the educator credit, which is the non-refundable portion, and now the 480 for the child dependent care credit or expenses, 
That adds up to the 4480. Going back to the page one, then there's the 4480 there. So there has been no change, in other words, to the taxable income. The tax has not changed. We're still at that 10,459. If we go then to page two, just to kind of recap this on the page two of the 1040, to double check this, page two of the 1040, we've got the 10,459, no change there. No change to that 2,500. And then we had the amount that was included in this 1,980, and that's gonna give us that 4,480. So that's what we're tying into on our side. So we got the 4480. There's been no change to the other taxes. That's the self-employment taxes, which we can see here, self-employment taxes to give us our total tax of the 13707. So that's going to give us our 13707 total tax, which is a little confusing because that includes these above the line credits or these uh, non-refundable credits, but they do not include the non-refundable credits, which are included in this 19,000. That 19,000 then being the withholdings on the W-2s, the estimated payments, if we had any, which we did here, and the 1,000 of the refundable portion of the credit. So that then on the tax return, if we look back on over, is broken out in a couple different lines here. So we're going to say that we had the 8,000 of the withholding. We have the 10,000 estimated payments, and then we have this 1,000, which was the refundable portion of basically the HOPE credit, and that's going to where we get that 19,000. So then we're just comparing that out. We've got then the 13,707 at this point. Let's pull out the trustee calculator just to calculate something. Haven't been calculated anything for a while. Want to calculate stuff. So 13,707 minus the 19,000, and that's going to give us our 5,293 bottom line or the amount of overpayment. And that should match out to what we have over here on our Excel sheet, 5293 as well.